dark out so we're gonna have to make this one quick but this is the robo cycle 2 I've been riding it around for the last couple weeks just really getting a feel for it uh, that way I can give you my honest opinions of what I think how I feel about the ride how comfortable it is how it performs all the good mumbo-jumbo and I'm gonna give you a little bit of specs on what all is on this bike all the details that you need to know and all the features that it has. This is the best bang for your buck in the e-bike world, especially in Canada, just because of the price to performance. Now, it does look like it's pretty expensive, but there are not a lot of options in Canada when it comes to e-moped style e-bikes, and this is one of your very few options, and I think they got a really good thing going for them. They have several different models. They all look similar to this one, but they have some that are dual motors. But this is the RoboCycle 2. It has a 15 amp hour lithium ion battery in the back. It has a 750 watt hub motor in the back. No brand name on that, so not sure who makes it. It's got 160 millimeter rotors and Tetro mechanical disc brakes. They work really good. However, I wish they would put hydraulic brakes on this just because of the speeds that you can get when you're riding now if you look up here we got the big giant seat it is really comfortable a lot more padding for your passenger but it kind of slopes down and uh, puts them up a little higher but uh very comfortable this might be the most comfortable e-moped seat that i've seen on a stock e-bike i think that's really nice here's your 15 amp hour battery it is charged with an xlr port and it's got a little cover there to cover that up and it kind of looks like a smiley face I thought that was kind of cute but this functions as a tail light and a brake light and you can hit this button here to tell you how much battery you got left it's only three bars but it has aluminum fenders which will hold up really well I just prefer plastic fenders myself just so we don't get the clanky noise every time you get something stuck up in there this does have dual suspension, so it has rear motorcycle suspension on the back, coilovers, adjustable, really, really nice looking, super, super comfortable. I haven't made any adjustments on the suspension at all, and it's been working fabulous. Now the front suspension are inverted, but they have no adjustments whatsoever, and the handlebars are built into the fork, so there are no adjustments on the handlebars either. You can't adjust them forward or back other than maybe you can turn them around and have them leaning backwards instead of forwards that might help you but for me this stance feels really really good i'm 6'2 so it fits me perfect um, i think it could fit probably anybody 5'5 five, five and above comfortably it's got a really cool looking retro logo with the robot for a robo cycle right in the uh, logo there that's really cool and it's got an integrated cup holder, which we've seen this on e-bikes in the past, but this is really nice. You don't have to worry about adding a bottle cage down here unless you want to, uh, but you can use that for a lock or something as well. Or adding a, another battery maybe, I don't know. All the wiring is ran through the frame. It's really sleek. The paint's real durable. Uh, it's a flat black color and um, you know, you could probably hit that with something and it probably wouldn't get too dinged up. Welds are real nice on the frame. Don't see any issues with that. Everything looks to be put together really nice. 
The rear battery is removable, so you can take it out and charge it at home uh, if you want to leave your bike in the garage. The cup holder is adjustable, so you can go in and you know put a small water bottle or a big Starbucks cup in there if you want. The front headlight is super bright, works really good at night. It's got that halo ring, and I, I just really, really, really like it. If you pair it with a secondary light, it makes a world of difference. But this will do you if that's, that's all you got. It, it is really bright for a stock headlight. Up here on the dashboard, we got these nice ergonomic grips. They are super comfortable. I really like these. They don't give me any pain. They don't move. Uh, they aren't locking, but they, they do fit really well. Now, yours is not going to come with a mirror, but I highly recommend adding a mirror to your bike. I'll leave a link in the description to this one, but there are many other mirrors out there. Here is your screen. It's pretty simple. We've seen this on other bikes. It shows your max and average speed. Gives you your odometer, how long the bike's been on, and all that. So to get into the settings to adjust the speed, you push and hold this bottom left button. So there's two buttons down here, one to power it on and one is a menu button. So you push and hold that left one, takes you in here. CR, this is to clear your trip if you want to reset that. Uh, you can set it to yes or no. You hit that menu button again, it'll take you through the different settings. But you can go in here and the password is 1919. You can go in here, SL is speed limit, and you can set that. The max is 62 miles an hour. Uh, you do have the ability to change your PAS levels as well. So then the exit, you just push and hold that, and you're good to go. Now your display will light up when you have the headlight on. So to turn the headlight on, you push and hold this plus button. And as you can see, the display is lit up, and we're going to need that here because we're getting ready to go. It does have a place to charge your phone on the screen here. So you have your USB port right here. If you need to charge your phone on the go from the bike's battery, that's really nice, convenient, definitely a must have feature. It does have Tetro mechanical brakes. Again, I wish they would upgrade those to hydraulic. It would definitely make a world of difference in stopping power, especially when you're doing 30 plus miles an hour. In our case, 33 today. You got your right-handed thumb throttle right here. It works on all the PAS levels, so if you got it set to zero, it's going to work no matter what. So you do have to be sort of careful with that. Make sure you don't accidentally hit it. If you're going to let somebody else borrow it, make sure you go over this real thoroughly. Or if you're going to have somebody test it out, that way they know how this works. It's not super powerful. It gives you a good gradual increase of speed. And um, I really like the whole setup so far you got your sis index it's a seven speed shimano shifter again the handlebars are non-adjustable they're pretty much static the way they are uh, but you do have two places there to mount accessories whether that's a light or a phone holder or anything like that so either one of those the rear shocks are amazing they work incredibly well as you can see, the light on the back is on because we got the headlights on. Uh, you can ride with a passenger, so you got a big, long, comfortable Kevlar style seat on the back. Very comfortable, very durable. It looks like it could hold up to a lot of abuse. And sorry about the sirens. Apparently, there's something going on. You got your standard Shimano Torni derailleur. It's a low end Shimano, but they always work good you got a double walled chain guard up here which is great don't have to worry about getting your pants caught up in there or your chain flying off a lot that really helps out with with that uh, and then you got your standard welgo pedals and uh, front and rear fender and then your 24 inch fat tires i really like these i like that they don't have that reflective uh, stripe that a lot of them do I think the all black looks really really good 
and I'm getting some accessories for this bike so stay tuned for another video I got one coming now I know you guys in Canada speak in kilometers and not miles so I've changed mine to miles I'm sorry I know you guys probably want to see kilometers as far as speed goes uh, but I'm in America so there you go it does have rear foot pegs for a passenger I don't know if I mentioned that but uh, throttle only range it says 30 to 40 kilometers now that is probably with a light rider on flat roads, so the numbers, you know, they're always skewed a little bit. Uh, and then pedal assist range, you can go 65 to 80 kilometers for my Canadian folks. Today we are riding the RoboCycle 2. Now this video is going to be for the Canadians because this bike is only being sold in Canada right now. Free shipping for them. And a pretty decent price if you ask me. This thing is a really fun, super comfortable. Suspension works really well. Seat's comfortable. It's got a place here for a drink, a drink holder down there. It's got a really nice frame. Definitely a lot of opportunities to upgrade this bike as well, which is something that I like to see. And we'll see what the top speed is right here. I've gotten it up to over 30 miles an hour, which is crazy. This is only a 750 watt motor. 32, 33. 34 34 miles an hour Okay, here we go for a hill climb test This right here is a four or five percent grade And we will do a throttle only I have tested a couple bikes up this hill in the past couple weeks, so I know what they did one has a 750 watt motor. It did 12 miles an hour up this hill. And it was pretty, it's a pretty powerful 750 watt motor. But this is doing awesome. Now, that's not like lightning speed or anything going up a hill but throttle only on a four or five percent grade did really well all right this is a seven to eight percent grade part of it is seven percent part of it is eight so we'll see how well the robo cycle 2 will do climbing this hill we're doing about 10 or nine or ten miles per hour up this hill no problem not hearing anything from the motor it's just cruising along we might hit nine miles here nine miles per hour yep this is the steepest part right here this hill climb right here we might even get to eight well, it looks like it might be staying nine and ten miles an hour up this hill that's not bad and we still have four battery bars we haven't lost any more batteries now we probably will here because that climbing hills just the motor and that's it that's pretty taxing on your battery all right we've been out here for a couple hours now filming doing the overview talking about the bike uh, it's already starting to get dark. I got a late start today. I was editing one video uh, Had to do some errands <laughs> Things like that
But we're still able to get up to that speed with our battery drain. Now our battery is pretty drained right now, so for our 750 watt motor, it does great. Same with the speed. It, it's uh, really, really quick and smooth. And you can't hear the motor at all. Super quiet, which is nice. If you put on some street tires, you probably have a pretty silent bike. And you know my recommendation, our V-Tire Co Speedsters, our V-Tire E Huntsman, if you want a more aggressive style tire, but also very, very quiet on the road. And they also have the zigzags, which is like a slicker rubber material. But they still are real grippy on the road. Great street tires. Probably not good for the rain, but all your Canada people up there have lots of snow, so take that into consideration. You probably want more beefy tires. So the E Huntsman are pretty decent on slick roads. I don't know how well the headlights are picking up today, but it's definitely bright enough to get you home at night, that's for sure. But being down at one bar, we still got quite a bit of power here. But we'll finish this off today and see how much range we actually get. I gotta get closer to home though. <laughs> Pretty far away from home right now. But this thing just wants to go. Like it doesn't want to slow down. As long as you're on a pretty level road, you're gonna get up to speed, even down at the bottom part of the battery. which is nice. All right, now it's getting dark, so it's gonna be hard for you guys to see much. But this is what we gotta do to complete the range test on the RoboCycle 2. I didn't think I was gonna do it today, but might as well. We are getting pretty close to empty here. I don't know voltage, so I can't tell you exactly, but we got one bar. We've gone 13 miles this round top speed of 34 miles per hour right here on this road which is incredible for a 750 watt motor really happy with that that means I don't have to upgrade it right away I would like to add more battery capacity for sure It is the perfect temperature to ride a bike right now. And I'm gonna take advantage of it for sure. 
Yeah, now the battery's getting low. You can feel it. But we're gonna leave it pegged the whole time. Still hitting 30 miles an hour. Crazy. All right, we're at 15 miles. One bar, it hasn't started flashing yet, so we're still doing all right. When it starts flashing, as soon as I notice, I'll let you know. Try to keep an eye on it as much as I can. But the speedometer is very accurate, so you don't need to have your phone with you or mount it to your bike if you don't want to. I know a lot of people get e-bikes to get away from this kind of stuff, so I have to have my phone on my handlebars for testing purposes so you guys can see. So you guys can see the speed and all that, mileage, etc. The first time I rode this bike, it was at night and there were a couple issues that happened during assembly or shipping or something i don't know but the fender i needed to bend the bracket a little bit to raise that up because it kept hitting the tire i think it's still hitting a little bit but it's not near as bad as what it was it literally made a really really loud noise at like 10 o'clock at night on a weekday as i was driving around so that was a little embarrassing, but not anybody's fault. Uh, but the main problem I had was the pedal assist sensor wasn't picking up the pedaling. It was surging a lot. Well, the next day I rode it around and found that the little housing that holds the magnets that basically sends the reading to the controller saying, hey, you're pedaling. The sensor that's hooked up to the controller it wasn't recognizing those magnets so those magnets are what tells your motor to go basically and uh but i fixed that that was something minor so if you have any issues with pedal assist on your robo cycle check that just make sure it's slid up close to the sensor on the frame you'll know what i'm talking about when you see it but it's a little round disc full of ma magnets if yours is functioning then you don't need to mess with it but mine had a little bit of an issue but that's really the only thing that I had a problem with. And that wasn't really even a problem. It was just something I couldn't see at nighttime. <laughs> Still got one solid bar. When it starts to flash, I'll definitely be heading home. But we're still cruising pretty good here on flat ground. Maybe my next video that I do for the RoboCycle, I'll change everything to kilometers. That way you guys can already know the, you don't have to do any converting. All right, here we go. We're starting to get a little slower. We are now flashing and that means we're gonna turn around and head home. We're at 17.4 miles right now, so all of that is throttle only. I did not do any pedaling in this video because really you guys are not going to be pedaling this bike. So, but if you need to, you have that capability. Like if I run out of juice right now, I'll be able to pedal home. Look, we're in a flashing battery right now. We're still hitting in the upper 20s.
Well, that was a pretty flat road. 26 miles an hour, that's pretty good. Yep, we just died. 18.89 miles. Almost 20 miles, just under. Almost, almost 19 miles, but yeah, we're gonna have to coast home so that's it for the range test we got it done that's pretty much it for the robocycle 2 if you want to see more about this bike hit that like button down below i'll start making more videos about it i have some ideas i got some accessories coming i got some orange reflective rim tape coming i actually think it's at my house right now uh, to put on the rim so it looks really good and uh, i got a bag for the frame this bike just looks like something that I want to upgrade, and I think that's something you guys could do too in the future. But I do have some plans for this bike. We'll see what happens. Uh, hopefully I can make some mods on this bike. I know you guys are really itching to see that. Uh, if you are interested in seeing anything else about e-bike related content, uh, you can subscribe to my channel. It really will help out the channel if you do that, as well as you'll get notified when I upload as long as you hit that bell. But that's it for the RoboCycle 2. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.